Out in the middle of nowhere, Utah, there lurks an immense population of goblins, hidden in their own private valley, and you can walk among them. It's well worth the $20 per vehicle entry fee for the privilege of wandering freely among the countless hoodoos. Eons of erosion have carved these unusual bulbous shapes out of sandstone which had formed 170 million years ago from deposits in what was once a tidal flat bordering an ancient sea. Goblin Valley State Park is entirely accessible to passenger cars via paved roads, about a 30 minute drive from the tiny town of Hanksville. I'm on a week long backcountry overland adventure, so I got here via dirt roads in my four wheel drive truck. I particularly enjoyed the drive through this narrow little canyon on my way to get here. If you're new to my channel, be sure to check out the first two episodes of my Utah adventures as well. I stumbled onto this campsite and thought it might be a good spot to come back to after visiting Goblin Valley, but the wind is just funneling through this canyon. I do really like the view it offers of this crazy balanced rock. I would not stand too close to that on a gusty day like today, or really ever. It's late afternoon in May and my plan was to spend the last few hours of daylight exploring Goblin Valley. The spring winds have been relentless all week today they've blown some kind of weather system in, so the light is not very appealing, and even though it's a Tuesday, there are a lot of people, sometimes noisy people, strolling around the goblins. But turns out the entry fee is good for two days, so I've decided to find some place to camp, so I can come spend a couple hours here early in the morning. There is a campground within the park itself, but reservations are recommended. Even on a Tuesday, there is no vacancy. Fortunately, the park is surrounded by BLM land and there are dispersed camping options not far away. This nearby butte appears to be situated perfectly to block the gusting wind, and while there are numerous other people camped up in the contours of the cliff, I eventually find my own little cove to tuck up into. another long day but uh, this is the earliest I have found a campsite uh, of the entire trip so far and I just love this campsite I've got my own personal goblins to camp with me tonight I've also got my own personal slot canyons two of them one is really nothing this one actually winds quite a ways up into the hill I really thought this was going to be a dead end as soon as I got around that first corner but it just keeps going and going. Cool. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Goblins. My co-host, as always, is my friend Robin. Tonight, we're gonna make a very simple meat and vegetables dinner, which is how I like to eat when I'm camping. I've got a little ribeye steak and uh, some green beans, and I think that's gonna do the trick. So I'm just gonna get these green beans started. What's that, Robin? Oh yeah, yeah. And the green beans, uh, once you get them well sauteed up with some garlic and butter, doesn't matter if they're fresh or frozen, they turn out well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Robin suggests letting the green beans get uh, reasonably well cooked and sauteed uh, before you add in the garlic because the garlic can can overcook and burn much quicker than the, the beans will be done. So Robin likes to get the beans, you know, nicely close to done before throwing the garlic in. For some reason, each time I cook with Robin, I get the song, Who Do You Love, going through my head. I got up extra early this morning and, after saying goodbye to Robin, it's time to head back over to the state park. My neighbors are still in their camps and are definitely going to miss the sunrise. Spending the night and coming back in the morning has proven to be the right call. The clouds are breaking up, the daily winds haven't yet started to gust, and I've got the entire park to myself. The valley of goblins below me is still sunk into shadow, so let's get down there and watch the sunrise again. There are a number of dedicated hiking trails leading to specific points of interest in the park, but the main appeal here, at least for me, is the choose-your-own-adventure aspect of this little valley where there are no defined paths to follow, and you can wander and explore at will. Sure for the park does say that you're welcome to climb up on top of the hoodoos. Uh, they only ask that you stay off the ones that, you know, look a little more fragile or unbalanced or ready to fall over. For an additional $10 fee, the visitor center will issue you a permit to fly a drone in the park. Another advantage of arriving at dawn before anyone else is that I don't have to worry about disturbing other visitors with my drone. Even though I was permitted to do so, I would not have wanted to make that annoying noise with people around.
Well, that was 100% worth spending the night nearby, coming back first thing in the morning. No wind, almost no clouds. The sun came out from behind the clouds. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. This is a really cool place. Totally worth the slight drive off the beaten path to get out here. Uh, totally worth the $20 to get in. And now I'm on the road, it's only eight o'clock and I can take my time working my way towards uh, my next destination. And I think the drive today is gonna be an interesting one. Coming up in part four, the scenery gets even more otherworldly. The driving gets even more gnarly and the campsites get even more epic. Subscribe now so you don't miss an episode, and thank you for watching.